On the edge of real and cyberspace, there's one place you can go, and you found it. Welcome to Nightwise.com, the one and only podcast with hacks, tips, and tweaks for cross-platform geeks. Whether you're a Windows, Linux, Mac, iOS, Android, or Sun Solaris user, we have the tips and tricks you need to tune tech into your way of life and let that technology work for you. My name's Nightwise, and for the coming, I don't know, 10 minutes or so, we're going to do a little bit of a review, a hands-on review, of Samsung's latest toy that has us craving to spend our geek allowance. We are going to take a look at the Galaxy Note 3 from Samsung, but not only that, we're going to take a look at the coolest accessory that is out there by Samsung today, the Galaxy Gear. Uh, yeah, we're going to take a look at the smartwatch, so if only to sound like Michael Knight if I say Kit Turbo Boost. What do you mean? Do not understand Turbo Boost. The Galaxy Note 3. It's their third iteration of their popular uh, phablet design that they started out with the Galaxy Note. And, you know, at the size of uh, about 6.1 inches, it is quite a big device. Uh, there's been a lot of controversy about the Note, whether or not you want it, whether or not it's too big for a phone or too small for a tablet, but it's actually a very successful way of um, actually using the phablet philosophy in a smartphone. Um, the design is uh, almost like um, the design of the Galaxy Note 2. Uh, and if you see on the back, they've actually kind of changed things around by not making it as round as the Note 2 used to be and are working with a little bit of a leathery look and feel. Now, don't be fooled. This is still a plastic casing, of course, but it does make the phone feel a little bit better in your hands. To compare things, I've taken my own Galaxy Note 2 here and I'll show you the difference. The Note 3 is marginally, you can see it down here, marginally larger than the Note 2. And just like uh, some of my friends on Google Plus uh, said a couple of uh, days ago, you know, they decided to uh, say, you know, let's make the Note 3 even a little bit bigger than the Note 2 so it doesn't fit into all of the Note 2 cases anymore. And then they laughed diabolically. I think that is exactly what they did. Now, this does make for a little bit of a difference. If you take a look at the bottom of the Note 2, you have these rounded edges, which when you hold the phone, kind of make it a little slippery to hold. And I think that that personally is something that really, really annoys me. With the Note 3, somehow it feels easier to hold and you're not afraid to drop it. Now, uh, specs-wise, there isn't a lot of difference between these two phones. If I just take a look at the specs, and I have to uh, kind of cheat on the internet, this one is a 5.5-inch uh, display on the Note 2, while the physical size of the display of the Note 3 is 5.7 inches. The resolution, however, is a big, big difference. While this Note 2 has the resolution of 720 by 1280 pixel, this baby comes in at full HD 1080 by 1920 pixels. That means 386 PPI for this Note 3, 265 PPI for the Note 2. It does show a little bit. I'll try to see if I can compare both of them by giving you an idea. The LED uh, brightness on the Note 3 is substantially brighter than on the Note 2. You can really see that. Battery time, about the same. Processor time uh, or processor speed is also a little bit different. This baby here, the Note 3, sports a 2300 megahertz quad-core Cryat 400 processor. And this is just a 1600 megahertz ARM Cortex A9 processor. So it is definitely a step up the Note 3 from the Note 2. The Note 3 comes with Android 4.2 and will be going to 4.3 um, pretty soon. 
I've just kind of basically configured it around here. It has all the Samsung doodas, bells and whistles. It comes with a lot of Samsung applications standard. I love this enhanced menu mode where can, you can actually quickly switch between different settings. And uh, it also has, of course, a lot of um, onboard Samsung applications, like for example, let's see here, um, the voice recorder, the action memo, Knox, you know, stuff like that. Stuff that Samsung puts on top of uh, its basic um, Android operating system to give you that added value. What the S3 also has, just like the S2, of course, is the S Pen. And there is no nice word to say the S Pen. Um, but I could bore you to death with details. I've been playing around with this phone for about a week. I must say, I really love it. Would I, based on processor speed or brightness of screen or, um, I don't know, battery life or, or anything, upgrade from a Note 2 to a Note 3? Probably not. It's not worth selling my Note 2 for just now. But the one thing I must say that does really uh, make me um, think about getting one of these is the way it feels in your hand. It's only a slight difference in weight between the Samsung Galaxy S2, uh, sorry, between the Note 2 and the Note 3. And I'll try to see if I can find the weight here. This baby is 168 grams versus 182 grams, but you do feel the difference. But what has uh, really, really improved is the fact that the edge right here, and I'll try to keep it to the camera so you can see it. If you can see the little grooves that are there on the side here, on the little aluminum border, it has these little grooves. That does make that you can hold this phone a lot better than um, the Note 2 with its um, pretty smooth and rounded edges. Now, I must say you can probably fix this with a case, um, but it does make a little bit of a difference. Now, the Note 3, fast, bright, light, nice to handle, um, big display, kind of like the Note 2, but only a little bit better, but that's not really what we wanted to review today. We wanted to go one step further and take a look at Samsung's idea of a smartwatch, of course, we are going to take a look at the Galaxy Gear. There is not a lot that gets me excited these days when it comes to technology. Um, there's not a lot in the technology scene these days that is really new, but the smartwatch is something that does tickle my fancy. I've been uh, the proud owner of a Pebble smartwatch for a couple of weeks now, and I really like the idea of having a second screen on your uh, wrist that will let you interact with whatever notifications that you're getting on your phone. Now, if you think that the Galaxy Gear is remotely like the Pebble, you're wrong, because this baby has an active LCD display that is touch sensitive. It has a webcam built in in the wrist and it also comes built in speaker and microphone in the wrist. Now, if I take a look at the bottom here, if we take a look uh, here, we see the charging points for the um, smartwatch. And what can only be uh, seen as, I think it's a heartbeat monitor for the sporting events right here. And that is uh, what you get when you get the gear. It feels pretty heavy and also quite sturdy. Now, the way you charge it is a little bit clunky. You get this little cradle with it that has the four contact points here on top and comes with a micro USB port right here. And what you actually do is you snap the phone inside, lock it, connect the charger, and that's how you charge your Galaxy Gear. That's how, uh, what it looks like, but now, of course, we are going to take a little bit of a look at what it does. The important question is, of course, what can it do? Well, it acts as a second screen for your Galaxy Note 3. Uh, at the moment, it's only um, compatible with the Note 3, but compatibility is coming for the Note 2 in the upcoming um, Android update. Um, but it gives you a 
overview of what the time is. That's something a watch do. Uh, the weather and of course um, the date. You can scroll up and down, uh, taking a look at the different functionalities of the phone directly, but you can just scroll from left to right to take a look at your notifications. The voice control that lets you control your phone using your voice. The voice memo function where you can use uh, voice memos to uh, kind of remember things. The gallery to take a look at the pictures that you took. Uh, the media controller to control your music on your device. Uh, the pedometer, I thought it was a pedometer. I thought it was uh, something to catch sexual predators, but it's actually a pedometer. So it takes a look at uh, the number of steps that you've taken throughout the day. Oh, sorry, just activated the function here. Um, and um, let's see, where were we? Um, some settings and of course, some other applications that are on the phone, like for example, your contacts, your dealer and your camera. This baby has a built-in camera. Now uh, I'll try to pan the phone around to give you a little bit of a look at my office and uh, upside down, here's me, hello. And um, it's actually a pretty good camera. You're taking, uh, you're looking at one of the spots that we have here to light whatever we're doing. And um, the camera is um, one with a pretty fair resolution. Uh, I'll see for, uh, I'll have to take a look at the specs to see how much uh, of a resolution the camera can actually handle. Here, I'll give it a cup of coffee to, to zoom into. You can see it's pretty cool. And you can just take photos by doing that. Now, the photos that you've taken are not automatically stored on your um, phone. You just have to uh, make sure that you can uh, transfer them. We'll do that right now. Um, wait, how did I do that? Oh, I, I can do that via the gallery, sorry. What I wanted to show you is that it can also make videos. Now it can only record 15 second videos and I have taken the liberty of uh, shooting a video when we went to Ikea and uh, I'll show you um, that little video as well. So you can just do that. And what you need to do to make sure that these um, recordings go to where they need to be is by going through the gallery. Here you see that uh, all of the things that I've recorded uh, on the um, on the smartwatch right here, like for example, this picture of Niana. And all I need to do is um, tap this icon here. That's that one. And then I can just say transfer to phone. Now it's being transferred to my phone. Let's see if it's on there. Let's see if we can unlock it here. There you go. We've received one uh, image. I'll go to the Galaxy Gear Library. And if all should be right, here's the picture on the Galaxy Gear Library. Uh, this is not really the way that I wanted to show you the video that I did, but here's the video that I took with the Galaxy Gear uh, at Ikea. <laughs> So it gets it gets transferred to to the Note 3 immediately. So pretty cool. The one of the other things that is of course on the gear is the fact that you have your notifications. Now I'll see if I can get back to the main menu. And we'll go to notifications. Now with notifications your phone should be your extension of your, uh, your smartwatch should be the extension of your smartphone. And here is where the Galaxy Gear fails. Because you see I have uh, a two notifications here. I'll tap them and it will show me that I have a notification on Facebook. I'll tap it again and this is where the device fails. Although I love the display and all the functionalities, this is something that is definitely a no-go for me. It doesn't show you what the notification actually is. And that is a real bummer. Now you can go to your device. It will automatically open up the notification that you are talking about. It will show it to you on your phone. That's everything. That's not a problem at all. But the notification, even though it's just text, doesn't show up on the Galaxy Gear. 
And that is a downside because even the um, Pebble does that. So it will open the application that has received the notification and that won't be a problem at all, but it will not display the notifications on the display of the Galaxy Gear. And that is a little bit of a bummer. Now, those were the uh, specs and quirks and uh, possibilities of the gear in general. Now I'll teach you or tell you how to let it work for you. The question is, of course, does it really work for you? Well, I thought because it had the extra functionalities of the camera and the speaker and the big display, it would really, really make a difference from my uh, pedal watch. Well, um, yes and no. I use this device in a different way. The camera's cool. You can really snap pictures as you go along and you don't have to whip out your smartphone. You can take the little videos, but those are 15 seconds, but you know, it's something. So that's cool. It does make you look like a little bit of a dork uh, making uh, shots like that, but you know, it's a nice added addition. The notifications is where the phone actually fails. I think that it's a downside that you cannot see the text of the notification. It is, this is something that can be called up via a software update, I think, uh, but that it's not on there right now is kind of a letdown. But where the phone excels is the fact that it's actually a Bluetooth speaker and microphone. This lets you use the smart watch, and I'm always saying phone, uh, and kidding, messing up phone and watch, so sorry for that. It's actually a little bit, a little bit of a phone on your wrist, so sorry about that. Where the uh, gear actually excels in is that it's a Bluetooth speaker, and you can use it with S-Voice, which is Samsung's equivalent to Siri. So I can just say, Make a new appointment at eight o'clock. Go out for dinner. You can see it's gonna Should try. Should I add this appointment to your calendar? There you go. Yes, please. I'm saving your appointment. There you go. I just added an uh, appointment to my calendar. I really, really like this functionality. When I'm driving and I have to think of something or I think, oh yeah, I need that appointment or that appointment, I use my phone or my watch to do it on my phone. I like that functionality. It also gives you some extra um, options like, for example, what's my schedule for today? And here it reads my schedule, or it should. Let me see here. Here are your great appointments. Take out the paper at 1800, appointment at 1900, and out for dinner. There you go. So it actually reads my schedule, and these are things that make the uh, Galaxy Gear stand out, and uh, these are the things that I really liked about it. But finally, there's one more functionality that you all wanted to know whether or not I liked it, and that is that you can actually make phone calls using the gear. I'm gonna show you how that actually works. Hey, I just met you, and this is crazy, but here's my number, so call me maybe. It's hard to look right at your baby, but here's my number, so call me maybe. But of course, there is the final functionality. The ability to use the Galaxy or the Samsung Gear, Samsung Galaxy Gear Note S3, I can't make heads or tails of it anymore, but the ability to use the Samsung Gear to make phone calls. When you're sporting a phablet, it becomes cumbersome to hold it on your ear, at your ear when you're uh, making a phone call. And if we go to bigger and bigger and bigger tablets, it becomes slightly ridiculous. So why should it? Why not? be even more socially awkward and try making a phone call with your watch. Now, what I do, try to show you here, is I will uh, use the voice commands, that's the easiest. Call Saskia. Calling Saskia. 
So the voice recognition is pretty good. It even gives you the uh, little avatar of Saskia here as I'm calling her. There you go. The audio comes through here. Let's see if she picks up. Hey, Niana, how are you today? I'm fine, thank you. So as you can see, I'm using the Galaxy Gear to talk to you right now, and your audio is coming out through the speaker at the bottom of the wristband. Um, how's my audio coming through on your end? It's sounding very fine. Okay. Well, thank you very much for uh, showing us. Is there anything else you want to say to the uh, Nightwise.com fans out there? No, I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll see you downstairs. Thank you very much. Okay. Bye-bye. And there you have it. A socially awkward phone call on your watch. Are you Michael Knight with this phone? Yes, <laughs> you kind of are. Your car doesn't come to you uh, or does it uh, or does turbo boost or stuff like that. And I hope that there is a male voice for the uh, S voice pack because then you really can have it sound like kit. But the combination of having the voice control and the Bluetooth speaker and microphone functionality is something that sets the gear a little bit further um, into the future than the Pebble right now. The only downside is, as I said, the fact that you cannot read your notifications on the phone itself, on the watch itself. So I really liked playing with this thing. I think that I'll probably get one when it's uh, available to hook up with the uh, Galaxy Note 2 because the combination of this baby, which is about 250 euros, I have to check, and buying a new Note is kind of pricey. The device is still um, a first gen, so wait for some software updates, wait to see what's coming um, from uh, the developers from Samsung to really make sure that you can really use your smartwatch as you should use your smartwatch. But if you're a geek and an early adopter and love to play around and do not have the urge to do private phone calls, this baby is downright perfect.